Herbs and Spices, Unit 9, Part 3, Herb Gardens. At one time, many homes had herb gardens. In fact, um, they were a, almost a standard feature of uh, colonial houses in America um, in the uh, 16 and 1700s. They were grown not just for the herbs uh, to flavor food, but for medicines as well. Almost all medicine was derived from plant materials. And so in order to have medicines on hand, these herb gardens were planted. Classical arrangement of an herb garden was a rectangular circle with walking paths separating different growing areas in which different herbs would be grown um, for different purposes. The paths were usually either paved with a stone or brick or a grass, um, basically to allow easy gathering of the herbs and medicinal plants um, in wet conditions. It's a photograph of a classical herb garden. Each individual area might contain more than one type of uh, plant, but it's divided into small sections like this. Um, one can easily walk the path and harvest from either side. Flavoring herbs, and here, what's the difference between an herb and a spice? Not really that much, though primarily we think of spices as being used uh, when they're ground or powdered or something like that. And herbs we think of in terms of uh, using whole pieces of leaf or whatever. Um, so herbs for flavoring food, many of them also were medicine. So it wasn't just this plant's medicinal and this one's for flavoring food. Um, they often had dual uses. Sage, one of those plants. Sage is a leaf of a plant called Salvia officinalis, which is native to the Mediterranean region. Now remember the specific epithet sativus meant commonly cultivated. A specific epithet for plant officinalis means that that was used medicinally at one time. So when, when Linnaeus came up with the system of naming organisms and uh, began uh, giving scientific names to various plants. Um, if that plant was at that time being used medicinally, the specific epithet of officinalis was often given to that plant. It's a picture of a sage plant and the part used is the leaf in this case. And the leaves are often used uh, dried and crushed. They're sometimes used fresh and whole or dried and whole. It depends on the particular recipe. Sweet basil um, is actually scientifically known as Asimum basilicum and is a native of India. It has been cultivated in India for over 5,000 years. The leaves are used as flavoring and usually used fresh. Basil is one of those um, herbs where the leaves are picked and then used before drying um, or crushing. Um, they are usually added at the end of cooking very near final preparation of the dish because heat tends to destroy the flavor of basil. Um, Dried basil is not used much, and the flavor is much, much milder than fresh leaves. There's a photograph of sweet basil. These are commonly grown in uh, herb gardens and windowsill gardens all around the world. Dill, Anethum graviolens, native again to the Mediterranean region, is grown as a perennial in that area. It comes back year after year on its own. Um, in colder, more northerly regions, it's grown as an annual. Both the leaves and the seeds are used. The leaves are called dill weed. 
the seeds still seed. The leaves can be used fresh or dried. Picture of a dill plant. And you can see the, the fine, fuzzy, lace-like leaves. Um, that part used for dillweed. And then at the top of these stems, the flowers from which the seeds are gathered for dill seed. Horseradish, it's the root of a plant, Emeracea rusticana. Not sure of the origins of this plant, most likely native to southeastern Europe and Asia, but it's cultivated around the world right now. It has been used medicinally as well as a condiment. Notice this is a plant that's used medicinally, but does not have the specific epithet officinalis. That's common as well. Um, oddly, horseradish is poisonous to horses, um, but at the time the common name of the plant came into use, the word horse was commonly used as an adjective meaning strong or coarse, and rusticana kind of fits that same uh, terminology. Here's a horseradish plant, and notice the, the broad leaves and uh, is actually quite attractive, um, white flowers. But the horseradish itself is derived from the root, as you can see in this photograph. Now, spices and health. As we noted, spices, many of them have traditionally been used as medicines. Um, and research going on today finds that many spices, and in fact other foods, do in fact have health benefits for people. And the following slides list some spices and the alleged health benefits they provide. So don't take it as gospel that they do these things. Basil, said to help with asthma and diabetes. Black pepper, reducing bloating and increasing appetite. It's also a strong antioxidant. A anything that's an antioxidant um, that, that we consume um, combats, as the name implies, oxidation in our bodies. And that's the process by which um, certain molecules become free radicals. And it's those um, free radicals that are thought to cause um, sometimes uh, uh, of cancer and other diseases. And so antioxidants help combat that. Uh, cinnamon may help lower cholesterol and blood pressure and may help with type 2 diabetes in addition to being a good source of magnesium in the diet if you need that. Um, dill helps with indigestion and gas. Ginger stimulates appetite, increases blood flow, and helps prevent nausea. And nutmeg may help with insomnia and improves appetite. Saffron, uh, this one is touchy. Too much saffron is dangerous. As little as seven grams can be lethal. And a gram is not a lot taken by weight. Um, but in small doses, improves blood flow and reduces blood pressure. Finally, sage, again, high doses can be toxic, but lower doses, it's an antioxidant and relieves pain from insect bites and stings uh, and is said to improve memory and concentration. Turmeric is a strong antioxidant and is said to lower bad cholesterol. That concludes Unit 9.